Hello everyone, my name is Francho Mayer and welcome to this week's webinar. This webinar will be a deep dive on how to custom create your own door family and rivet using advanced family creation methods. After this webinar, you would have a comfortable idea, hopefully, about the family creation environment in Rivet and know a little more about the methodologies used in family creation. So, a little bit of a background about us. So, who is Baker Things? Well, we are the fastest growing design and technology partner in South Africa. And we have three methodologies that we live by. We believe in designing a better world, in delivering a better project or product, and in technology adoption to produce results. All right, let's move to the agenda for today. In today's agenda, you will be learning how to configure a rivet in family environment, and then we'll focus on creating a door jam, creating a door panel, adding a glass panel, and then creating symbolic lines for plan use. And then we will use the object.com to get a door handle for more aesthetic purposes for our door. And then when all is done, we will test this door that we created on a project. Basically, we will learn how to turn this open gap in a wall into a functioning door in Rivet. So let's get started. All right. So every time you open Rivet, this will be your home screen if you're using Autodesk Rivet 2019. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on New under the Families category, and I'm going to search for a metric door, which you can find right here in your library. So program data, Autodesk, Family Templates, English, and you'll find it here. All right. And this will be the first uh, window that will open, which is a floor plan ref level that you'll be presented with when you open up any door family or door family. Now you can see there's a few things that we can focus on. Here is the exterior part. So we can assume that this will be the interior part. Here is the width of the door at the moment. And here is a few millions, which I don't need for this specific project. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete them. I'm going to also change this width a little bit more to 1,200. And yeah, this is a good place to start. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the properties palette and then just click on family types. And we're going to look a little bit about more to the parameters side of things. So at the moment, you can see that the rivet has hard coded some parameters that we cannot delete. We can only change the value of, but you can add additional parameters. And that is what we're going to do right now. So for us to be able to create a door jam, it is very important to add some parameters. So I'm going to do that right now. First parameter I'm going to add is called a jam size. All right, all the other components I'm just going to leave at default and I'm just going to group it under another parameter or group, which is general. I'm going to group it under general. All right, I'm going to click OK. I'm going to create another one, calling it jam total. I'm also going to group it under general and, I'm going to click and leave all the other at defaults as well and click OK. Then I'm going to create another one, calling this jam stop. Okay. And again, I'm going to group this under general as well. And this is good. So I can use these parameters now. I'm just going to give some values to them as well. It's going to be about 20 moles, the stop depth, the jam size will be also 20 moles. And the jam total, well, that's going to be two of the jam sizes, which is a formula. So we're going to type in jam size times two. And remember, it's very important to realize that formulas is case sensitive. So when you want to type in a word here, for example, it needs to fit and use the same letters. And uh, yeah, as well. So this is good. All right, it seems to be working fine. That's good. And I'm just going to create one last parameter calling it the door thickness. And I can leave this under the group parameter. That's fine. And the door thickness, I'm going to make 38.1 millimeters. All right, so now we're ready to start. I am going to now an exterior elevation just to see what we have here. All right, 
you can see that this is the cut that we have. So I'm just going to click on tab to be able to select this highlighted block. And then I'm going to edit the sketch. I'm going to read this part. And I'm going to make it a bit more aesthetically pleasing by making it a round surface. I'm going to click here and click here and just click it over there. That's good. Now we can have a nice round opening surface for our door. So if I go into a 3D view, you'll see that this is just an uh, opening in a wall with nothing created yet. So now we're going to go and create the door jam first. So for that, I'm going into, I'm going to go into exterior or interior. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to into interior elevation. It's better. And then I'm going to create a sweep. So I'm going to click on the create tab, create sweep. And I'm going to pick the path. I'm going to select the frame. There's this one, this one, and this one. All right, that's good. I'll click Finish. And this will be the path for my sweep. So now I need a profile that will basically then extrude from this part all the way for this path. All right, so I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to go to the floor plan. And then I'm going to click on Edit Profile. And then I'm going to go click on create and we're going to create some reference planes, which is very important because the reference planes is what we associate those parameters with. So I'm going to create some reference planes. First offset is going to be about 20 moles and I'm going to click the big lines and I'm just going to click on here. It goes on both ends longer stretched and I'm going to click on it again and then I'm going to have an offset of 38.1, which is the door thickness, and I'm going to just offset it from this line here. Okay, that's good. I'm going to add some dimensions to this. And again, when it comes to dimensioning uh, reference planes, I'm just going to click on the strong axis to the weak axis. In this case, I'm going to click out the gray little gray out area, and I'm just going to take it to here. That's good for me. Okay, the scale is a bit large. I'm just going to make it a bit smaller, one to five. That seems to be good. Again, if I dimension from strong axis to the weak axis, that seems good. And again, I'm going to click on the strong axis to the weak axis. That's also perfect. And that looks good for me. All right. Okay, now we're going to assign some labels to these parameters. So I'm going to click on this dimension, for example, and I'm going to click on the door, the jam size. This will be the stop, the jam stop depth. Oops, I just made a spelling error, but that's okay. And I'm going to change this into the door thickness, which we also added. Okay, great. So those labels are done. Now we can go ahead and sketch our path or our profile. So I'm just going to get, go ahead and click here. That's good. Click on this line, on this line, on this line. And I'm going to click on here, here, and here. And one thing I did now wrong is I forgot to lock it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete all these lines that I've just created. And I'm going to make sure that when I click on pick line, I'm going to lock it with whatever I associate with it. So I'm going to click on these lines, this line, this line. And now you can see, all right, this is perfect. I want it to be locked. You click on this line, this line, and this line. Okay, and it's all locked. That's good. Now I'm just going to trim it up and make it look more like a door jam. So in order to do that, I'm just going to use the trim and extend commands. For this, I'm just going to extend this, and this, and this. Remember to click on this part that you want. Okay. I'm going to click on this part here, make it smaller. And for this part, I'm just going to use a fillet arc with a radius of about uh, maybe three millimeters to make it nice looking, a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Okay, I'm just going to make sure I click on the right parts and so and then right here as well. Okay, I'm going to use this trim multiple extent for this part. And then for this middle part, I'm just going to use the split command and split it on this side, on this side. Delete it. Okay, cool. Now this looks more like a door jack. The door will be here. Now I'm just going to add a material to it. 
I'm going to click here, material by category on the screen dotted lines. I'm going to search for wood because the wood material is not added into any family template, so you have to add it additionally from your AC material. If you can't see this window, just click over here and it will bring out this window. So now let's choose cherry. I'm going to double click until it's selected. All right, perfect. And click OK. And that's good. If that's sorted, and I'm just, oh yeah, and I just want to add a parameter as well. So for this, I'm going to call it uh, jam material, which is good. And one thing I also still want to do is just make sure everything is good. Looks all right. Yeah, seems fine. It's going to go ahead and click finish edit material. All right, so profile is set. Now we're going to finish the part sweep and click check. I'm going to go to 3D element just to see if it came out correctly. Let's see, realistic. I'm going to make it fine. Yeah, looks good. Nice. So we can now go ahead and create the door panels that will be situated on this side. All right. But first, what, before I want to do that, there's a few things I want to do. I want to change this width into something else. I'm going to change this into the rough width because I want the width to be just the width of the door and the rough width should be the door plus the jams. So I'm just going to change the parameter. So I'm going to click ahead on family types and just going to go and fix this spelling error first. And then I'm going to go to the draw rough width, which you can see here, and I'm going to change this into a family, uh, into a formula. I'm going to call this jam total plus width. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it seems to be working. That's great. I'm going to click OK. All right. Now we know that our door will be exactly a meter. And we can also change it specifically as well. OK, cool. So before that, now, before we create a panel, we also have to create uh, parameters that's associated with the specific panel. So let's go back to family types and create some more parameters. So the first parameter that I'm going to create is called door reveal. And I'm going to leave it in the dimensions, that's fine. And create another one called door style size. It's also good. I'm going to create another parameter called door bottom rail size. And then I'm going to create another one called door undercut. And then I'm going to create another parameter called door location. All right. I'm just going to give some sizes to it and explain what it is. So the door bottom rail size is basically the bottom panel, which at the moment I'm just going to make about maybe 61 to 50 mils. Door location, well, that's going to be basically from this part here until maybe a little bit more off from the door jam itself. So that's around 23 millimeters. The door review is going to be that additional three millimeters. It's going to be the space between the jam and the door itself. The door style size, I'm going to make it about 150 more. You can see what that is in a second. And the door undercut, that is basically the space between the floor and the door itself, which is about maybe 10 moles. Okay. Uh, just one thing about the door location. This is about 23 moles, but I need to make this formula instead. So I'm going to say it's going to be jam size plus door reveal. So if we know that it's that it is equal to 23, right, perfect. So now we can create some uh, door panels. For that, I'm going to go into my exterior elevation and I'm going to create the sweep. All right. So first, when I am in the create, I'm going to click on sketch path. And then I'm going to, while I'm in this modify sweep and sketch path, this is when I'm going to create reference planes associated with the path. So I'm going to click on reference planes and I'm going to click on pick lines and offset it around 23 moles, which is obviously the location door size. So it's going to be around here. Click it right there. And here. 
that seems good. And then of course I'm going to do another one, the door off, the door undercut size, which is here. So it is perfectly aligned. All right, good. Now I'm going to label them and add some dimensions to it. Again, from the strong axis to the weak axis. And from new strong axis to the weak axis. I'm going to click and click on this one. I'm using control to select both of one so that I can change the label at the same time. This is going to be the dual location. All right, great. I'm just going to add another dimension for this part. I'm going to click on here, strong axis to the weak axis. And this is perfect. So now this, I can change the label to the door undercut. Perfect. So now I can create a cut path. I'm just going to click on pick lines to do this. Make sure that you are no other, you're not reference line, you can just create a path now. So I'm going to click on this reference line you just created. And I'm going to create on this reference line. Oh yeah, and make sure I'm going to lock it, of course has to be locked with the reference line, because that means if you change the parameter, this line will move with it. All right. Now I'm just going to change a few things. I'm going to trim this part, make it a multiple trim. So I'm going to click here, click here. Okay, that's good. And I'm just going to click on this line as well. Trim multiple elements, stick in this reference line, click on this part, click on this part. Now for me, to, for in order for these uh, lines, the sweet part to move with this reference line, I have to also align it with this specific line. In order to do that, I'm just going to click on that line command, click on this part, and then you see that there's a little dot that appears. When you, if you click on it, there's a lock button. So I'm just going to click on that lock button to, to lock it. I'm going to do it again with this part, lock it, and I'll do it again above as well. I'm going to click on this, lock, click on this, and lock it. Perfect. All right. Of course, we have to finish the loop, and that's what I'm going to do right now. And we'll just do that again with using the start and radius arc. I'm going to click here, and I'm going to click on that side, and it'll snap into position. Perfect. So that will be our door panel. Okay. This is our path that we just created, our sweet path. Now we just need to go and create our profile as well. So let's click on Edit Profile. We're going to go into the floor plan ref level. All right, cool. And from here, we can now create the panel. But before we're going to create the panel, we just, for the profile, we have to create the reference planes first. So again, I'm going to create, click on Reference Plane, Create Reference Plane, Big Line, the offset will be around, uh, let's create the first one, which is 38.1. That's for the door. All right, that's perfect. And we will also have that 151, which is from here. That's perfect. Okay, let's dimension these ones. Strong axis to the weak axis. And then Again, strong axis to the weak axis, strong to weak, 150. Keep the labels. So this is, of course, the door style size, and this is the door thickness. Okay, cool. With those parameters and labels set, we're going to go ahead and create our profile. I'm going to click on pick lines, and I'm just going to click on these lines. Make sure that the lock is turned on. I'll click on this one, click on this one, and perfect. I'm just going to make it more aesthetically pleasing by just trimming it off. So here in this corner, here in this corner, we can make it a little arc here with a radius of three moles. Perfect and perfect. Ah, cool. Of course, I need to change the material as well. So I'm just going to edit the profile again and click on this material here. I'm going to associate it. Oh, it seems to be already on the cherry, so that's fine. Okay. Okay, so with that done, let's see if this happens. To look nice. Let's see, our door panel is taking shape. Now we just need to create the door rail that's underneath here as well. Oh.
Okay. So I'm going to go to the exterior part of it again, and I'm going to click on Create, Sweep, and I'm going to sketch the path. Now, before I'm sketching the path, I'm going to set some ref planes first. So I'm going to create, click on reference plane, and I'm going to set some again. So the first one I'm going to do is, I'm going to, is it's going to be the undercut, which is an offset of 10 moles. So if I click right here, that's perfect. And now we can And we can also set the 23 most one, the, the door location one, which is on this side. Okay. On this side here and on this side here. Okay, perfect. Now we just have to label them as well, associating them with our parameters, which is from the strong axis to the weak axis over here. Strong axis to the weak axis over here. And strong axis to the weak axis over here. Okay. Let's table our parameters, yeah. our dimensions. This will be the door again. Okay. And I'm going to label this to our door undercut here. All right. Great. So now we can add our path now. I'm just going to click on pick lines and draw this. Make sure, again, it's locked. So we have to pick the lines, we have to pick these reference lines so that it moves if we want to change our parameters, for example. So now I'm also just going to quickly cut it as well. So we use the trim extend command. This line here, all right, perfect. Right on the other side, click on this line here and that one there. Perfect. So we have our sweet path. Okay, now I'm going to go and edit the profile for the sweep bar. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the line, left alignment so that I can see the profile. I'm going to select the specific profile that I have here, and I'm going to edit its profile. Now before we can actually edit the profile, again, we have to add some reference lines. I'm going to go ahead and create, create, click on reference planes, and then I'm going to give some offsets. So the first one will be the door, 38.1. And click on pick line, and I'm going to make sure that I click on this side. All right, cool. Then I'm going to create another one, which is around 250 moles. That's the door actual size. So if I click on this one, there we go. That's perfect. And now we can just go ahead and draw our profile. So let's do that. I pick escape a few times so that I am in the edit profile mode. I'm going to click on the big lines, and I'm just going to go ahead and click on these lines. Okay. That seems good. Making sure it's locked as well. Now I'm going to just trim them with maybe a fill arc again, radius here, and here, and here. Yeah, and that looks good. Making sure that the profile should be set to wood, it should be. So we're good to go. Let's see it out in 3D. Ah, nice. Looks like it's working now. All right. So you can see that at the moment it's also kind of like it is dissolving through this wood here. So I don't really want that. So I'm going to click on join and just click on the two elements that I want to join at before. Rivet will automatically solve that out for me as well. Now the only thing we have left here is our glass that we need to add. That's perfect. Oh, and of course, there's one thing I still need to change. I didn't add the labeling for those parameters. There's last reference planes I added. So I'm just going to add that as well. So this profile. I'm going to click and edit the sweep. Now, this can happen a lot of times. I mean, this still happens to me. So it's a good thing to always check if your reference planes and your parameters is actually working as you want them to be. So, so 
selecting the profile, editing the profile. I'm just going to go ahead back to the length elevation, and I should just add those diameter, those dimensions that I want. Strong axis to the weak axis, this one, and strong axis to the weak axis, again, this one. And it's a good idea. Strong axis. Again, this would be the gray outline to this one. That's perfect. And now this we're going to just label this. The door thickness. And this one is going to be our door of the rail size. Cool. Now we're ready. Let's go and check it out. All right. Seems to be working. Let's see if this works. That doesn't matter too much anyway. All right. So we have our door, and we're going to just add our glass as well. So to do that, we're going to go to our reference plane, and we're going to create. Before we're going to do anything, we're going to actually just add some reference planes in by itself. So I'm going to click on reference plane. And I'm going to create a few. So this one is going to be the door thickness, as you can imagine, for 8.1. Click here. And then I'm going to create one that's about the half of it. It's going to be around here. It's going to matter too much to dimension, so we'll sort that out. So the first dimension, again, strong axis to the weak axis, to here to here. It's going to be pretty eight. And then we're going to have the strong axis. All right, we're just going to equalize this. So we know this one is exactly in the middle. Okay, this one in the middle, I'm just going to rename and call this glass location. Apply. So we have now a place where we can add our glass. So if I go to my exterior elevation, and I'm going to now just add the glass that I want. So I'm going to create use the extrusion method for this part. I'm going to click on extrusion. And I'm going to just sketch out the path. But before I sketch out the path, I want to set this exact working plane, which is what we now just created for glass location. So I'm going to click, make sure I click on glass location for this. Now I'm just going to click on pick lines. I'm going to pick out these specific lines to be able to draw it. You can see it very, but there it is. And here, and we're just going to join this out. And for this part, I'm just going to use the tangent arc again. Perfect. All right. Now, before we can finish this, there's a few things we need to change first. So the extrusion end, I'm just going to make this around about 250 mils, but maybe minus 3. And then the extrusion start, I'm just going to also make about 3 mils. So it will be going minus 3 in the, in the opposite direction, backward direction, and forwards in, by 3 in the front direction. I'm also just going to change the material as well. I'm going to make this glass, so you can type in glass and search for it. There it is. Perfect. And if we click yes, see if we created it. It's a 3D. Ah, perfect. We have our glass. Wonderful. We're getting there. So I think the hard part is now done. We can now just focus on the aesthetics and also how the symbolic lines and how it will show on a plan on your project. So for that, I'm going to go into my reference level, and I'm going to use symbolic lines for this. So I'm going to go into annotate and click on symbolic line. And we know the rough height or width of this. It's about 1,240 millimeters. And we're going to draw out the symbolic line or swing of this door. I'm going to start, and we're going to start by using this point, not this point, this point for this. I'm going to make sure it's about 135. That's perfect. That's about 45 degrees in the other direction. And I'm going to make this to 14. And make this inside of the door, which is pretty open one. And I'm going to, in this direction, I'm going to take it again, one, two, four, zero. And finishing it up. Boom. I'm going to add a tangent arc symbolic line as well. I'm going to start from this point here. 
And just from there, I'm just going to click and start to do this part here. So we have the swing for 45 degrees. The last thing I want to do is just give it a dimension. We're going to dimension this whole thing. So I'm going to click on dimension. And we're going to start with, with this one. This part here, do this part here. This point here to this point here. And then the angle dimension from the strong axis to this point here. Okay. Let's go change the labels. This one I'm going to change to the door uh, rough width. So rough width is precise here. And this, of course, is going to be the door thickness, as you can guess. And this one doesn't have a label yet, so we're going to create one. We can actually create the shortcut for that. Let's just create people here. And we're just going to call this swing angle. Okay, we're going to make this an instance parameter. And I'm going to change this under a new category. Make this maybe say graphics. Click OK. All right. I'm going to just add another parameter so that it can go from 45 to 90 degrees. So you can follow the steps and see how we do that. We go to family types and create a new instance parameter and call this existing and i'm going to just group this also under the graphics so that everyone is nice and together and i'm also going to change the type of parameter to a yes or no statement so that it's tick and now this swing angle i'm just going to change this to a formula we're going to say if existing is true which means it's tick it's going to be 45 degree else it's going to be 90 degrees so I'm just going to click apply. Yeah, it seems to be working. Now, this won't work in your, in your uh, project here, for example, but it will work in the project. For some reason, Rivet doesn't allow it. It just goes 90 and it doesn't want to change again. But that's okay. So we're going to just keep it here. Okay. We are almost set and ready to go. So we can just change and check how it looks. Let's just see if this wall is going or this door is going to behave the same. Like maybe say if the wall changes a different size, what happens? Everything happen. Everything looks still like it's good. Perfect. Let's change the wall again to see what happens. Maybe make it a free angle. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, I need to change the door thickness. And I'm going to change this. I'm just going to make sure that the door thickness doesn't change. Or the door thickness should be locked and should be always staying pretty 8.1. I don't want this to change to a different size. So if we change now of its walls, we'll have yes, perfect. The door should stay the same size. That's exactly what I want. Cool. And yeah, so that the uh, as you probably have noticed as well, the, our save command has popped up. So we just need to kind of save this as well. So what I'm going to do is just show you how I would like to save my family templates. I'm going to click on File, click on Save As, and I'm going to click on Family. And I'm just going to scroll down to the folder that I want to save this as. So for this part, I'm just going to change this to Door Family Creation, into Door. And we can just call this Door. Into options, I'm going to change the number of backups to one and click on save. All right, perfect. Everything should be working fine. So, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to create some aestheticness to this door, and that's by adding a, a door panel, a, a door handle to it. And I'm going to show you how to utilize bimobject.com for that. So, if you go to your web browser, and you type in www.filmobject.com, this is the web page that will appear. And from here, you can search over really a lot, lots, thousands and thousands. It seems here there is so many types of them objects that you can find here. And there is bound to be one that is suited for your needs. In this case, I need a door handle, so I'm going to choose the category doors, and I'm going to click on door handle. And I'm just going to search that in this category. Eventually, you'll find the door handle that I searched that I wanted, which is this one, and you can just download it. Okay. So once it's downloaded, you can go to the folder where, it's, where you saved it, and you can just upload it into Revit.
All right. So in this case, this is what we are dealing with. We have the store handle now, and we're going to just upload no, load this into our project. So I'm just going to click here, load into project, and it will automatically do the rest. Cool. So it seems that it's now coming out as two blocks, but that is probably just because of the detail level. So we're going to just change this detail level from course to fine, and we'll start seeing our door handle as we should. So for now, I'm going to just rotate this door as well to the, uh, the right angle, 90 degrees. Okay, that's good. And I'm just going to move this to the right area as well. Sometimes families come out a little weird, but they will still behave in the right way when you use the project. So maybe it's around here. All right, that's perfect. 38.1 millimeters, exactly. And then I'm going to go to an elevation just to make sure that it's the right height. Okay, I'm going to move this upwards around 915 volts. See how it looks. Yeah, it looks fine. There's just one last thing I need to do. So I'm going to go to back to my reference plane. I'm just going to align or lock this with this part so I know that it won't shift and the wall size is different. So I'm going to click on align and I'm going to click on this part. And on this part, you can see that's already selecting the individual object that I want. And I click on lock and now I know that this object will be locked with this alignment at the door. So it won't move anywhere else. Now, of course, you can add additional parameters for this door, but for the purpose of this exercise, you can, you just need to know how to do what I'm showing you, how to utilize BIM object and how to import it and add it to your project. Okay, so now, the moment of truth. Let's see how this uh, door of us behaves in the actual project. So with that, I'm just going to close up here. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to use an architectural template. I'm going to create a wall, all right? And I'm just going back to my old project and then loading it into my new project. So my family project into my architectural template project. There we go. See, pretty Perfect. And there it is. Of course, you can go back to your plan view to check it out. So level one, you see here, you will find that if an or statement, if else statement right here is if you click on the door, you can see the system. There it is. Works like it should. Let's change the wall size. Perfect. The door size thickness doesn't change. Everything looks like it should work. Ah, happy with this. So there you go. The things a little fine. We have our door. So yes, congratulations. You've learned now how to create the door. And that's as easy as that. <laughs> So in summary, you've now learned how to configure the environment in Rivet to your suited needs to be able to create a door like we did today. We created our door jam, we created the door panel, we added the glass, and we learned how to also add symbolic lines, how it will be shown on a project. And then we also learned about how to use BIM object to find new, uh, new objects that you can just import in other families, that's already done. And you can also learn it now how to import your family that you created into an actual project and utilize it from there. So thank you so much. If you have any other questions, you can contact me from this email address. And yes, I, I hope that this webinar today really helped you in learning a little bit more about Rivet. And I hope to see you guys very, very soon in my next webinar. Thank you. Bye.